Hello and welcome to Dad's fifth round five word challenge story. For this one, we're trying something a little different, which we hope you will like. However, for transparency, some of the images you will see are AI generated, but the story most certainly isn't. The title of the story is a football, a greenhouse, and some missing sausages. But before we begin, Let's recap the five words you need to look out for in the story. They are bell, dog, glass, annoyed, and sausage. Travis loved football. In fact, he loved it so much that he would even use one as a pillow at bedtime. Wherever this little boy went, you could guarantee a round thing would be by his feet as he nutmegged chairs at school, lollipopping round lampposts and doing one-twos with just about any wall, tree, fence or object he could find. There was also something else that went everywhere with Travis, his best furry friend in the world, Bruno, his dog. Now, as you can imagine, Bruno also liked playing ball. So when Travis was kicking one around in the garden, his four-legged pal joined him. Everything was going so well, with the boy shooting at the goal in the garden as Bruno jumped through the air, paws outstretched, saving anything Travis put his way. That was until one wayward effort flew over the fence and into the next-door neighbour's garden. With an almighty smash, It crashed into and through the greenhouse. Glass flew everywhere. Next came the booming sound of Travis. Uh Uh-oh, we're in big trouble now, Bruno. Quick, let's get out of here, the rather nervous and worried boy said as he grabbed another football and darted out of the back gate, Bruno following close behind. Rather upset and grumbling to himself, Travis wandered around for a little while, but ultimately found himself at his favourite place to think, the park. Despite being sad before they arrived, the park really cheered the little boy up as he and Bruno slid down the slide, with the dog sliding on his belly before shooting off the end and landing on his feet like a ninja. Travis, on the other hand, would plop off the end and do a belly flop onto the ground, which seemed to make Bruno laugh, if dogs can laugh, of course. From the slide to the swings, where they would take turns to push each other higher and higher. But Bruno's favourite thing to do in the park was the roundabout. The four-legged animal would jump onto the roundabout and beg Travis to spin him with those puppy dog eyes, tongue hanging out, and a paw in the air. As the ride got faster, Bruno would howl with delight, almost begging to go even quicker. The funniest thing for the boy, though, was watching the dog get off the roundabout. He was often so dizzy that he would zigzag all over the place before falling over. Travis would find this so funny that his belly would hurt and tears would fall from his eyes before he too would fall onto the floor next to his friend and stare at the clouds in the sky. It never mattered what the clouds looked like. It always had something to do with football. Look, Bruno, it's the FA Cup. Or, look, it's Anfield. I'm going to play there someday, he would say to his furry pal, who just stared at him, head tilted slightly as if trying to listen to every word. Talking of football, it was time that two friends had a kickabout. After all, they hadn't done it in such a long time. A whole ten minutes. Now that's a really long time, don't you think? The two played lots of games. 1v1, kick and fetch, skill school. Bruno loved a soul roll and the usual penalties. But it was during kick and fetch when things got a little interesting. Travis kicked the ball, and for once, 
Bruno missed it as it rolled down the hill and into the bushes. Still, the dog shot off at warp speed to go and get it back, tail wagging as he went. The little boy still practised his free kicks and shooting skills with an imaginary football while he waited. Minutes passed and the four-legged pooch still hadn't returned. That was odd. He would surely have found it by now. It was time to investigate. So off Travis went in the direction his friend had taken. As he approached the bushes, he called out to his friend Bruno. Bruno! Bruno! Where are you? Come on, boy! But there was nothing. No noise. No rustling in the bushes. However, he could see the football deep in the foliage in front of him. Getting down on all fours, then onto his belly, Travis crawled like a tiger, stalking its prey as he edged through the undergrowth. The ball almost in touching distance, when he heard a shout of, Oi! Where's my sausages? From the other side of the bush somewhere. With the ball recovered, the mystery as to where his furry friend had gone still needed to be solved. Bruno, come here, boy, he kept repeating as he got more and more worried. What am I going to do if I can't find him? Travis thought to himself as he continued the search. Suddenly, he heard a faint rumbling sound coming from a spot a bit further up from where he was. The closer he got, the noise got louder and louder. Is that snoring? When he arrived at the source of the rhythmic sound, the little boy crouched down and found his dog, Bruno, fast asleep in the bush, with a sausage hanging out of his mouth. Oh, Bruno, you silly sausage. I think we'd better get out of here sharpish before that man finds out you stole his lunch, Travis said, as he gave the dog a gentle nudge to wake him from his dreamy state. Licking his chops, and after a huge yawn, Bruno lazily got to his feet and trotted after the little boy, who was happy that he had found both his football and his friend. More importantly, he had had the time to think. I'd better go and say sorry to Mrs Grumblebutt for breaking her greenhouse, and to Mum and Dad for running off, I suppose, he thought as they made their way home. When they arrived at the neighbour's door, Travis pressed the bell. After a few moments, the kindly Mrs Grumblebutt answered the door. Hello, Travis, she said. I'm really sorry about your greenhouse. I really didn't mean to, the boy said apologetically. The friendly lady replied with, Thank you for your apology, young man. Accidents happen, and there are worse things in life but I'm more annoyed that you ran off, actually. So are we, came the sound of the boy's parents, who appeared behind Mrs Grumblebutt, before continuing with, Mistakes and accidents will happen, but it's important that we admit to them, not run away or hide from them. But it does show courage to face them and say sorry, which you did, eventually. Exiting Mrs Grumblebutt's house, they took Travis by the hand and said, Let's get you home. It's lunchtime and we need to discuss what jobs you can do to help pay to fix the greenhouse. Before turning their heads and giving Mrs Grumblebutt a knowing wink. The end. <laughs>